Boxing Ego Quick Hits. Ego? Ego, E G O. Boxing Ego. Boxing Ego. B O X Y E G O. <laughs> Did you smell it? <laughs> Bayday, Bayday, you want Bayday? I know that. Canelo Alvarez, next opponent, Cinco de Mayo. New names are emerging as to who that could be. One of the names that's coming in as a strong potential is the man you see on screen. None other than lines only, yeah. Keep running your mouth, keep running your mouth. Jamal Charlo. Sources are reporting that Canelo may actually fight Jamal Charlo. And I wanna give my thoughts. Listen, this is a fight that I wanted to see for years. However, and there's a big however, and this is the funny part about my job. When it comes to boxing, I'm the best in the business. Jamal Charlo, I think the timing is crazy because Canelo had several years where he was in the same division as Jamal Charlo. Same weight classes as Jamal Charlo. And he waits till Jamal Charlo's hair looks like this, like the black Michael Myers, and he's been inactive and he had one comeback fight from Jose Benavidez. So yeah, I could picture the fight now happening. But then when Charlo was active and he was counter upping guys like J-Rock, who was his mandatory, who was trash talking him and stuff like that, where was Canelo? So I wouldn't be surprised if Canelo does fight him. This is a Canelo, this is a standard issue Canelo move. Now, another name that is being linked for Canelo is Jaime Munguia. And here's the thing, Jaime Munguia's team has already been on record stating they have had preliminary or some level of talks and Canelo's team did reach out for a potential fight. But knowing what I know, Canelo, this is what he's doing. He's keeping his options open and open-minded. And if Jaime Munguia has a sensational performance and knocks out the guy that he couldn't knock out, which I don't even think is the same level of world beater some of you guys rate John Ryder as. Listen, I'll give Jaime Mugia props should he beat John Ryder by stoppage. But personally, I don't think John Ryder is all that. You know what I mean? That's my personal opinion. But here's the play. If Jaime Mugia looked dazzling and sensational, let's say he looks much better than his Dennis Hogan fight. Let's say he looks much better than his fight with Dervinchenko because the Dervinchenko, some people even thought it was a draw or they had Dervinchenko winning or had him winning up until the point he got hurt, I think in the final round. So this is the, I'm telling you how Canelo works. I've studied Canelo. I've watched his whole career. I watched him grow the peaks, the valleys. This is what's going to happen. I think that there's at least two bullets in the, in the chamber. One being Jamal Charlo and one being Jaime Mugia. And really, it's dependent on how, because we already seen how Charlo looked in his comeback fight. He couldn't stop Jose Benavidez. No biggie. You know, you're not going to stop everybody. And Crawford may be the only one that stopped Jose Benavidez. But depending on how vulnerable or good Jaime Mugia looks, that's going to eliminate him possibly from the Canelo sweepstakes. Mark my words, write this video down, bookmark it, write it down, take a picture. I don't give a uck, right? That's how Canelo operates. So Jamal Charlo is a candidate, I believe, possibly for like Amazon Prime. But I do think that Canelo is going to secretly be paying attention to the Jaime Mugia fight versus John Ryder, a guy that he knows because he fought him in Mexico and just really depending on how he looks so again if it's a blowout from Jaime Mugia and he devastatingly knocks out um John Ryder I won't deny you I'm a, a rider you don't want to mess with me I got my hand in, in, in me if that happens and if he looks too good or makes it look easy then I think that almost rules him out this is how Canelo moves. He's he's so busy golfing and, you know, spending money because he, he definitely robbed his own when he was over there. 
because at least the the fights on PBC, you can sell the Jamal Charlo fight. Me personally, I'm telling you why I don't prefer it at the current time. I've pushed for this fight and there were better years. Like when Canelo chose to be the franchise champion instead of fighting Jamal Charlo. When he was active and we, we knew what was going on with him. And instead, Canelo petitioned and they made a brand new witness protection belt for him. And he worked with the WBC to avoid his mandatory, which was Jamal Charlo. Like when Jamal Charlo looked like this, this would have been a perfect time for Canelo to fight him. Because the, the fake part about boxing fans, they say, oh, Ego, Tank needs to fight Devin Haney, right? They'll say stuff like that. I want the best versus the best. But then when other fight, like Virgil Ortiz just fought, was he fighting the best? Was he fighting Jerron Boots Ennis? Was he fighting anyone that you remotely wanted to see him fight? But then let it be Jamal Charlo coming off a long layoff. They say he got to fight Dimitri Bivol or, or somebody who we know is good and has been probably a little bit more active than him and hasn't had mental health issues and whatnot, right? How does that work? You know, Canelo, he don't have to fight Jamal Charlo at his best. And if you feel Jamal Charlo is at a best point and he has one fight to his name against a guy at a catchweight, missed weight, and had mental health issues and a long absence from the sport. And pe like this, this proves my point because the same people complained and counted days how many days Jamal Charlo had been out the ring. They were like, oh, he's been out the ring 1,000 days, 1,020 days. So they were complaining and pandering that he had been out the ring for a long time. But if Canelo picks him, they're not going to have a problem with that magically. They're going to be like, oh, okay, this is a great fight because they don't care about the best versus the best. They want Canelo, like, if he can beat up both black American brothers, you know, and get victories over them, then they'll then all is forgiven for the past years where he didn't fight him. Like, he could have fought Jermell Charlo at 154 because they were all relatively at 154. Canelo was kind of at cat. Canelo way to 155. To me, that makes a lot more sense. But instead, this is what Canelo does. He waits and baits, just like Triple G. He could have fought Triple G a certain year, and then he didn't. And he even gave up and relinquished his belt to Triple G so he didn't have to fight him and fought against Liam Smith. Right? So I wouldn't doubt that Canelo, as part of his PBC deal, he owes him, I think, three fights. He fought Jermail Charlo, beat him soundly. I wouldn't be surprised if he's targeting uh, Jamal Charlo, who we don't even know, like, mentally if he's the same. Like, just little things, like Caleb Plant slapping him and or you look at the press conference and the Zoom conferences with Jamal Charlo and Jose Benavidez was talking reckless and you didn't really see the same aggression that we've seen from Charlo in the past. So he may still have a lot of things going on, but we'll see. You know, it will be a fight, I think, that can sell pretty well, just given the nature that Canelo already beat one brother and this is the bigger brother, but I don't like the timing. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section.